Hello, my name is Russell Boyle and my project investigates just how effective commonly used ventilation techniques really are. Ventilation is the process that removes stale air from the building and replaces it with clean outdoor air. Ventilation flushes the virus out of an area and reduces transmission. As the virus cannot be easily detected in the air, CO2 concentrations are our next best indicator. Infectious people exhale airborne viruses like SARS-CoV-2 at the same time as they exhale CO2, so higher CO2 concentrations correlate with a higher risk of virus transmission. I assessed the effectiveness of various ventilation techniques, both passive such as opening a window or door, as well as fan-assisted active ventilation techniques using both controlled and real-life tests. The controlled tests were conducted in a sealed off room and involved the release of CO2 from a gas cylinder in a safe manner until the concentration approximately 15 times that of outdoor air was recorded on a Raspberry Pi based instrumentation system. At this stage, one of a range of ventilation measures was enacted and the decay of the CO2 was monitored. The air changes per hour rate, which is the true measure of ventilation that quantifies how many times per hour the air in the room is replaced by new air was then calculated for each test automatically using a Python program. The real life tests involved placing sensors in classrooms to monitor CO2 levels over extended periods to determine if ventilation measures employed in classrooms were adequate to maintain safe CO2 levels. An array of CO2 sensors was used and sensors were placed at different heights during both sets of tests so that CO2 concentrations could be measured at several points in the volume of interest simultaneously and the stratification of CO2 could be assessed. Being heavier than air, it might be expected that CO2 would form higher concentrations at lower heights in the room. I wanted to see if this is truly the case, as this could have serious implications on the airborne spread of COVID-19 and for the optimum placement of CO2 monitors. Another integral part of this project was the mathematical modelling of CO2 levels. Two recognised methodologies for estimating CO2, human generation rates and other relevant data were incorporated into the models I created. The accuracy of these models was assessed by comparing them to the results gathered in the classroom. It was found that both the passive and fan assisted active ventilation techniques followed the standard exponential decay model of CO2 concentration and that fans blowing air out of rooms gave an ACH rate of approximately three times that of fans blowing air into rooms. CO2 concentrations were found to, in fact, increase with height and this is an inversion of the, of the stratification of CO2 that might be expected. The CO2 levels in classroom A were within recommended levels the vast majority of the time, whilst in classroom B, the CO2 peaks consistently exceeded these levels. The models developed predicted CO2 levels with reasonable accuracy, and they gave good qualitative predictions of CO2 concentration waveforms. Thank you for listening.